Hey, Carolyn, are you there? Oh, okay. That was weird. You were all dark for a few seconds. I don't know, my camera. Uh, yeah. My camera doesn't like me. <laughs> Give me grief. Hmm. How you doing? Good. I'm eating lunch, so ignore me. <laughs> I had a lunch of champions and had a scoop of ice cream. <laughs> Oh, wow. That sounds good. It's pretty warm here today, so that sounds delicious. It's cold, cold, cold. It was like 45 when I woke up this morning. I don't know if it's just going to be us today. Okay, I haven't done anything since last week, so. Um. Okay, well, we can do a working meeting today. Um, yeah, that can work. Let me that talk. Um, I can catch you up on what I've been doing today. On what? I can catch up on what I did today. Oh, sure. Um, let me share my screen because it's actually just like a lot of little things. <laughs> All right. So I went into the project templates repo and kind of realized there was a bunch of things that were kind of missing. Okay. So one, maybe I just walk through the, you don't have rights to this PR, I'm sorry, to this repo. Um, Paris doesn't, a whole bunch of people don't. So I submitted a PR to basically give this repo the same permissions as the other repo that we have. And so this will add you and Paris and uh, Dawn and Jennifer and Josh and Stefan and everybody else so that we can get people to approve these PRs that are being <laughs> submitted. <laughs> um, so that should get looked at pretty soon. Cool. I um, have one that, that was actually from two weeks ago, which is to rename uh, master to main because we agreed on that to a while ago that we wanted to do that um so it re renames it from master to main and then it marks this repository as a template okay and what's kind of cool about that is now when someone looks at our readme it'll look like here, i'll show me show you, i'll show you another one i'll show you skeletor um It'll look like this. Use this template. Oh, cool. Yeah, they'll be able to like clone the whole thing really nice and easy, and it won't quite be a fork then. It'll be like their own standalone repo yeah. going forward, which is nice. Um, I added a code of conduct. There are two contributor covenant versions that are really out there. And I went with 1.4. Is this the one that's used for CNCF in general or? Yeah. So CNCF in general uses 1.4. So that's, that's what I went with. Okay. If you take a look at it, this is the, this is, this is what we use um, for like Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. Um, Here, let me put that in our notes. Just 
So what's Contributor Covenant? Um, Contributor Covenant was started, oh, I'm blanking on her name. Did she put her name on here? Coraline. Have you, do you, are you familiar with Coraline? Mm -mm. Okay, uh, so Coraline, I think she, she, you know, she worked at uh, GitHub for a while. Um, I think she was really active, I think in the Ruby community as well, um, and has worked quite a bit at the forefront of defining uh, that we need code of conducts, what should be in them, how to enforce them, and then getting um, projects to use them. Cool. And so this is kind of a, a generalized code of conduct that people can can use that that we that has been like versioned over time. I see. Um, and the latest version is 2.0, but it, last year's code of conduct committee for Kubernetes looked at it, and uh, you know we weren't quite sure if this was something that um, it had it had different things in it different concepts and ideas that we weren't quite sure, especially like the enforcement guidelines. Um, we weren't sure if this was something that projects would want to adopt without a lot of customization um, that we could like uh, generically adopt. Yeah. Whereas 1.4 um, doesn't, isn't as proscriptive about what will happen. It just says what um, isn't, is and isn't allowed. Um, wait, so then I have a question. I guess this is like what you're doing, right? Like you're, well, okay. So like, have you seen Paris's, um, like HackMD doc about like having a code of conduct committee at the CNCF level? Um, I think there was like the beginnings of it. Yeah. A while ago, and I may have, I may have seen that. Um, I'm just wondering, like, now that you're bringing up the code of conduct stuff, kind of like where, you know, like where do the terms for something like that at a CNCF level um, kind of happen? Like if it is part of the SIGS charter or does it like happen? This at, like, is, oh, sorry. I was just saying this is just a template. Yeah. Or if you well, do not have a code of conduct. This is a generally acceptable one that the CNCF itself has used on many projects. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds like there's a few, like, I guess there's like a few different sides to this, right? Because there's like the side of it where it's like the documentation, which is what you're trying to provide, right? Like a template. And then there's like the, I guess, governance side of code of conduct things. And um, okay. Yeah, I was just wondering like kind of where those talks would happen, if it would be within the state or not. Um. Yeah, I don't know where that would happen. I don't know where that has that that particular effort to have a a, a higher level discussion about kind of code of conducts in the CNCF. Yeah. Um, because you know one of the questions I was asking was, um, for for a code of conduct, as we add one, and I kind of added notes in here. So I, I tweaked one thing that isn't part of the this default template added it to do and I said you need to decide who will handle the code of conduct reports and like mm -hmm. edit it yeah um because I've, I've been telling people look for to do's right so yeah. just to help them find where they should do a find in a place um but we also I want to recommend that they have at least two people in the template I don't go into great detail on why but it, if we had like companion advisory guides you know, the reasons are, if you only have one person, how do you report that one person? <laughs> yeah. Things well, like you that. Can't really recurse yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You can't recuse yourself. Exactly. You can't go on vacation. What if you're, you know, there's all sorts of situations where you need more than one person to be able to handle reports. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, like from being on the committee, there's a lot of different uh, things involved with it beyond just having this document. Right. There's no training at all. We insist that as part of the CNCF that you have a code of conduct. We don't insist that you are equipped at all to know what to do if someone emails you. Right. Yeah. That you know how to handle it appropriately. Um, with discretion, without harming people further. Yeah. Um, that 
you actually act on it. Right. You know? Anyways. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know where that, that belongs, to be yeah. honest. But we, we could ask Paris at the next meeting, maybe. And yeah, I just wasn't larger sure discussion. there like, more developments that I, were like, there are dots that I just hadn't yet connected. But, um, yeah. okay. Yeah. But as far as like, what's a safe uh, code of conduct, this is the one that most of the projects use. Mm -hmm. So I felt, you know, if you don't know what to pick, here, here's the template that you can just have. Yeah. So, um, so that's trying to like fill out this repo. And then there's a readme now that I'm adding that will walk people through, okay, you copied this repo. What are you supposed to do with it? What's in this repo? Yeah. Who is responsible for the repo? So you, yeah, I mentioned it's part of you know, our group, you know, how to, how to click on the button and use it. Um, and then what's required, uh, uh, you know, over time as we build up this repository, not everything we put in here you have to do. Right. Some things may be for incubating or graduated or sure. just a nice to have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I tried to add things and just be like, this is what you have to do. And maybe there's some advice in particular to a template um, that we could, you know, give people further information on. And then I thought at the bottom, we could, there's a comment here, you can't quite see it. Okay. Once you're done reading through and following everything, we kind of tell you to rip everything out at the top and then you know, the rest of the readme is yours. Um, can you remind me like, so you said some of these aspects are required, but also like, are these things that like CNCF will enforce projects to use? for like as templates or is it still like more of like hey like you need to have this kind of document or something um it's a mix and match yeah okay. um for example you must have a license yeah it must uh be open source it is strongly recommended that it is apache 2 <laughs> Um, if you don't use Apache 2, there's a different review process mm -hmm. for your submission, for your project, to get into the CNCF. Yeah. Um, so because of that, our template is Apache 2. Right. Right. Um, and then our advice, like the documentation, whatever, outside of the template, we can mention that and say, like, hey, if you really need something different, you can do something else. And some of that falls in the governance, I think, not contributor growth. Yeah. Um, or for like the contributing document, if we take a look at it, they don't have to have all of these things in here. You must have a contributing guide and uh, it must hit on certain topics. Right. Um, but for example, does it need to say how to sign your commits? No. Okay. It's just kind of a template to, to get you rolling and get you thinking. I think that I would hope that as a group, we don't focus too much on what is strictly required in the content of our templates to be like, we only put in what's required. Yeah. And we put in what we'd like to see people do. And if they right. use our template, it's because... Um, they're hoping to just have a good contributing guide and not just meet the line item of we have a contributing guide. Yeah. Okay. Um, Cause then I think we can really put a ton of effort into to, to creating some really useful documents that don't just say, well, we've, we've, you know, checked a checkbox. Uh, Cause if they just want to check checkboxes, they can read the TOC guidelines. Um, it's it's really short. It's like six bullet points, honestly. Um, all the repos, everything our group is trying to do, I think, is is try to help people who are who are in good faith trying to do a lot more. Yeah. Um, but it is helpful at times to call out like, 
what do you have to do when you're when you're looking at like a list of six or 20 yeah. templates like which ones do you really have to do now which ones can you kind of like save for later yeah totally um i don't know does that does that help yeah yeah it does okay um so that's what just what i was trying to do the uh get get this repository a bit further along um because if we could get it to the point where it represents what you need to say say do sandbox sandbox has the most people starting a brand new blank repo that would be terribly yeah. useful yeah I think. i'm already thinking of like a group i'm working with that's like just about to open source a project and yeah 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 i think that'd be good um if we look at our uh contributor growth content there we go this is what we have to do for our working group what content do we have to create yeah so we have the license already. It was in there, we just didn't have instructions on what to do with it. Um, we have the contributing. What I did with the readme actually isn't enough. I think we need more instructions on like what else should be in a readme. Sure. Like contact info, a couple other things, joining meetings, you know. Um, But we're getting we're getting there. Uh, the contribution ladder, um, and and some of these other things are like really nice things to have, but none of them are required by the yeah DNCF. Let me move up owners file actually because owners is up there. And governance. Owners is required for sandbox. Okay. And governance is required for incubating. And con contribution ladder is required later too. That's for incubating as well. But if we could get like everything for sandbox and be like hit a milestone where say like your sandbox project, you can actually use this and it has everything you need. Um, I feel like we would have hit a really good spot. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I've kind of just gone off on a very long tangent, but that's what I've been doing. <laughs> cool. um, can oh. oh, sorry. Do you want to look at something else? Oh, I just I was going to ask you to scroll down so I can see the rest of that page. Sure. I was just unless it's like on the table. This was like we just kind of made like a bucket list, really, of yeah. things we could do. What are advisories as opposed to templates? So a template is just strictly, this is the output file that, that you'll need in your repository. Mm -hmm. So for example, the contributing guide or yeah. the contribution ladder, right? But there may be something equivalent to just a web page that we may have or, or a markdown file in a repo uh, that, that just has guidance that we talk about how you would go about not just like creating the content in that file, but the whys for really. like the, the whys and then yeah. the how of implementing some of this stuff. Sure. Okay. So if we're talking about the contribution ladder, for example, we may talk about how do you identify people who look to be ready to yeah. be kind of encouraged to move up the ladder and, and what, what do you do? How do you, how do you foster and kind of uh, sponsor them through that process? And, and just various things that they don't need to be in the template, right? Uh, but maybe they need to be just guidance and, and that we provide. So they're kind of like companion yeah. walls of text to go with our templates. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, that's kind of what you've been referencing this whole time, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and some templates don't need the companion wall of text, like yeah. the license file, the readme file. But some of these other documents, they they represent actually a lot. <laughs> like sure. the yeah. ladder. 
Yeah. See, you said you haven't had a chance to work on it much more. Yeah, I haven't really touched it since we had our um, our working session. Is there anything I can do to help? Do you think that you've decided maybe on how we'd like to get it to the next step? Like, do you um, think there's more things we should collaborate on in this document first? I think there, I'm trying to remember, I think we had some questions around governance that we wanted to ask Josh, right? Yeah, let me go through some of the comments. How role decisions are made and by whom? And then we've got, oh yeah, how to say that, the same everywhere. <laughs> Calling people contributors. I don't, I don't think I see the question for Josh. Was it, um, hold on. Teams, man, so many notifications. Um, Was it about maybe involuntary removal of the stepping down process or inactivity, perhaps? Maybe I remember it being specific. So like, it was like a weird line between like, uh, like you know, the contributor ladder and like governance specifically. Because um, I know that you know what's out of scope is project lead roles like you don't see project lead or sorry not project lead like um chair um things like that wait is that some are you saying that we should add that though well so project lead is a section and then yeah i didn't really think about like chair but like being a ch like a Chairs are usually for what, like SIGs? Or are there project chairs? Is that a thing? Um, I think there's people who are involved with the governance of the project. And then there are, yeah, I think that's where it gets fuzzy. I think we're gonna have to have Josh chat, chat with us about the intersection between the governance doc, which talks again about government ro governance roles and then mm -hmm. these contributor roles so uh, like maybe project lead shouldn't be on here okay um i'm gonna make the comment here so we don't forget <laughs> yeah um, i think that's what we should ask him about i'm not sure if there was there was more um what do we want to specifically ask, jo ask Josh? does this belong in this guide or in the governance, or do we only, or do we like limit the scope of what we talk about in the project lead role and then reference, like, go look at governance for more information about this role? How do we make sure that we don't have two disjoint documents, but still adequately represent some of the other roles here? Uh, ask Josh about if the project lead slash chair role should exist here or does this fall within governance? Um, we'll want to make sure. So if you and I think about this for a minute here, what did we mean when we said project lead? Um, so I think this is when you talked about how like if CNCF comes and talks to someone from a project that is, you know, a project lead, if there are decisions being made, this person has the authority to make those decisions. Okay. Right? And like, I think in a sense, there's like kind of like a public um, <clears throat> association of the project lead with the project. And so, um, okay. yeah. And then like, 
And then I think you said like the project lead doesn't necessarily like work on like the like code aspect of the project and it's more like administrative maybe or like the, the tasks that they've that they're signed up for as part of this role mm -hmm. isn't technical decisions mm -hmm. yeah potentially yeah this is definitely a, a a real conversation with josh okay um, um thanks for asking about that yeah all of these right here like this is governments. I think like the the re the reason why it's governance is is because it's makes decisions for the project, not just technical. Um, so then if we still kind of have that bit to detangle, should I put this in the draft folder on GitHub or should I just do like a Google doc for now? Like, I'm just wondering if that conversation will Josh, um, like fit better with one or the other. I don't really care. I don't think it'll matter. Um, I think one thing that this is missing at the moment is it's very, um, it's still kind of like an outline. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you interested in trying to paragraphize? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. I was gonna work off of like what you had done for the project template, like the way that you presented that. Um, like, is that a good, example to work off of or do you want it more paragraphy when you say the project template can you i think let me i think i have one of your do you have a, a link oh sorry it was the contributing one what's actually committed or um i just have this window specifically open like this one right here um, the one that I sent you on chat right now. Oh, sorry. I never see chat because it's, uh, yeah, no worries. It's like stealth. Okay. This one. Well, it's kind of a mix, isn't it? Yeah. Whoa. What? Oh. <laughs> You gotta look at it in raw form, otherwise you don't see. <laughs> you just see the word to do and you're like, what happened? I wrote a bunch of text. <laughs> so like there, there is bulleted, but we still have more than just like yeah. a line of text. Like I think we have enough outline that you and I understand it, but they're yeah. just like requirements, right? Or like follow a reviewing guide. Like this isn't enough for someone other than you and I to read. Um, I think we need for example, maybe like a, a template for yeah. what each one of these could look like. So let me just say like little template would be something like, like a long form description. Oops, that's in bold. Like the thing you and I just went through when we said, what's a project lead? <laughs> Uh, trying to just distill that a little bit into a sentence or two. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then have it be like responsibilities and um, oh shoot, like things you get to do and things that you have to do. Well, it's kind of how it's outlined right now, right? Yeah, I'm just saying we can make like a, a a template so it's not just literally bang, 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 bullet points without. Oh, you're saying like have a template that applies to, yeah. to, okay, as opposed to like having each section and then the bullet points, like just have like one set of. 
Please. Yeah, that's all. I was just <laughs> saying like we have like a world template yeah. that says like the title, right? Mm -hmm. So this would be like community member, for example. Yeah. And it would say whatever it is or whatever it's some deep thoughts we have about this, right? Right. And then the responsibilities, and this is where our templates come in, our, our bullets come in. Okay. You know, to the whatever and things you have to do. Um, it's not just right, shoot. I'm blanking on the word here. Privileges, there we go. It just made it, I don't know, it could be whatever. So like, for example, here we may like, Right. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> um, sure. And then each one would look like this instead of all the bullet points. Okay. Um, and I think just then when we give people a contributor ladder template that then they would go in and edit. Okay. And then we could just tell them to do, pick which one of these you do, you have. You may not have community manager, so you can delete it. Sure. So. And then we can just try to try to find our bullet points and make them fit in. Yeah. Um, if you want, we can try to do this right now. If you want your time um, back, we can just say later. I realize I have another meeting here. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No worries. Yeah, like blocky, well, you like come my meeting at two thirty. Um. So. Um. But yeah. Um. Do you want to take time to work on it this week? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll send you another Calendar invite for another working group or working session. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we can do this and then we can submit that draft and, you know, we'll follow up with Josh when, we has, when he has time. Okay, cool. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Bye. Bye.